Hey, what is up, everyone? We are finally back. It has been forever, but we are here. It is the Global Crypto Market Analysis, episode 64, proudly sponsored by FTX, one of the world's largest exchanges. And we've joined a great partnership with FTX. They're going to be bringing you season three of the Global Crypto Podcast as well. So look out for that. They've just listed AVAX. Big competition there. You can get your share of $800,000 in AVAX if you go and trade with them. Click the link in the description. Also, they've listed Joe, Trader Joe, $100,000 worth of Trader Joe to be given away as well. If you just click the link in the description, check them out. FTX, big thank you for the sponsorship. Uh, welcome back to Graham Tennant, the uh, manager of the Spectrum Fund. We'll get into that, but also to Paul Francis. Paul now at Zargo as well. I mean, we're all now full-time crypto. What a privilege it is. And it was a long time coming. Uh, where do we start, Graham? Let's, let's start with you, man. Spectrum Fund, one of the most exciting funds that you are now managing uh, for, for South Africans to be part of the crypto action in a regulated way. Yeah, how's, yeah Chrissy, how's it, James? How's it, Paul? Good to be here. Uh, back on the market analysis with you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, very briefly, Steward Spectrum, uh, it's a Steward Spectrum digital asset portfolio is um, the product that um, I'm the portfolio manager for currently. And yes, it's a digital and actively managed uh, digital asset crypto portfolio um, that we've set up in Mauritius. And yeah, it's been a, a very exciting times. And yeah, I think part of the reason we've, we haven't got into the market analysis as often as we want is because of our, our, um, our busy day-to-day uh, -day schedule so it's been a very ex exciting year on that front so very happy with where we've got to and yeah looking forward to what uh, next year is going to hold for for uh, that side i think that's exactly it everyone now just running around like crazy trying to uh trying to keep an eye on these markets paul you're also doing it full-time now for zargo um financial analyst or market an uh, analyst at zargo is that correct uh correct would be market maker Right. So for predominantly Ripple, new, relatively new exchange, you know, so creating a market, getting some liquidity for, you know, the people that don't know, moving money across the world using Ripple is, is really fast, easy to do. So, yeah, good, good new um, chapter. Down in Cape Town as well. So uh, we need to do another Cape Town meetup, that's for sure. Um, all right, guys, let's get straight into it. A lot of things happening at the moment beside well a lot of things happening and actually a lot of a lot of uh, sideways movement as well i mean um bitcoin's been hovering around 48 49 to 45 for like the last couple of weeks now but on a macro level looks like things could be starting to bottom out have we hit the bottom graham take us through what you're seeing first sure so let me let me share my uh, screen Let's go all the way out to a monthly chart here. So this is the Bitstamp Bitcoin uh, dollar price. And this shows you, uh, you know, the, the macro uh, bull cycles that really revolve around the halving period. So the halving period, as most of our viewers probably know, is, is where the Bitcoin supply halves in the, in, in the rate that it's supplied onto the market. And that happens approximately every four years. And what you see is the market cycles uh, revolving around um, that significant period in, in the tokenomics of Bitcoin. So that aside, what we can see here is um, the current bull market cycle, which, uh, in, which effectively started at the end of 2018. Um, and we can see the previous two bull market cycles as well on the screen here. And you know, what I'm very familiar with is the 2017 bull market, as many of, again, of our viewers uh, maybe as well, um, that was, um, you know, really put Bitcoin on the map in many ways um, in, in that 2017 period, is along, along with all the other altcoins. Um, but we, we can see here that um, you know, the 2017 market cycle was a much cleaner move, uh, a much uh, faster move to um, the top at, at that point in time. And, you know, the broad bias for me was that we were going to see something similar um, to the 2017 uh, bull market. But um, as you can see here, it's been uh, quite a lot slower going. So everything looked like it was pretty much on track, March, April. Um, but since then, we've had, you know, as you said, largely sideways uh, market action. And you know, and I think it's important as traders and as as traders as as traders and investors um, to have specific biases that you're looking towards, and you're obviously looking to um, 
predict in some ways where um, the market action is going to go. But as information changes, as um, uh, new information becomes available, it's important to be able to change your position um, accordingly. So I think you know probably what I'm expecting here is is still um, good price action to the upside, but I, I just expect that it's going to take a longer period of time. And you know we've got clearly a, a loss of momentum, um, and that's what we've been enduring the last couple of months. But you know, I'm still bullish on 2017. I still think that we'll see. Sorry, I'm bullish on 2022. <laughs> Uh, apologies. Ah, I'm um, very, very bullish on 2017. <laughs> 100%. Um, but um, so I still expect that we'll see um, $100,000 plus on this uh, market cycle, which is you know, double uh, from where we're at at the current values. So still bullish, but you know, on, on the next couple of months uh, rather than uh, the next couple of weeks. So that's broadly where I'm, uh, I'm positioning. And yeah, it just means that we need to be more patient. Um, we'll have to um just postpone our, our plans for our limos uh, a little and push that a little bit further out um and yeah i think the key thing is not to get flushed out and not to destroy your capital uh during the sideways market action and that's why uh, risk management as we always talk about in the show is so important and it, and survival is actually the name of the game and that you, you're not destroying capital during these time during these periods you're not getting overly uh, leveraged or overly bullish on your on your favorite altcoins um but um, you're rather to take the big picture and, and obviously look to bank some of the shorter term gains that we make from time to time, um, because I think the good times will be back. And it's just a, a point of making sure that we're around uh, when, when, that, uh, when the tide turns. Now, um, you spoke off, off air, uh, off camera. We were talking a little bit before we went into this about um, this cycle because of the numbers involved, the volume involved, it's going to be a lot more prolonged because you know it, it takes a lot longer for, you know, and it takes a lot more volume and a lot more liquidity to get to $100,000, for instance. Um, yes. So uh, someone looking at that is uh, Benjamin Cowan. Um, yes, take, us exactly. through, take us through what, what he's um, charting at the moment. Great. So I think you know, Benjamin Cowan, along with, um, 100 trillion plan B are, are, are really good guys to follow um, if to get an appreciation of the market cycle. Um, so I think you know, Ben Cowan has been on the money. He's been speaking about uh, this market cycle uh, encompassing uh, diminishing returns and extension. So uh, you know, this is a really great chart because it shows you uh, three previous market cycles here. Obviously, blue being the first, orange being the second, uh, uh, yellow being the third. And then our current market cycle is the purple. And this is a bit of an outdated chart because this is from June, but we know what happens from here. We move sideways for a fairly extended period of time. Um, so everything is playing out here now to be in line with this extending cycle, uh, diminishing return uh, thesis that he's put forward. Um, and yes, you, you're right. You know, for us, um, for, for Bitcoin to get to um, you know, 100 billion market cap and then a trillion market cap, um, you know, it takes X amount of um, buying pressure to get it there. But once you're at you know, the $2 trillion market cap where we're at for you know, the, the entire um, crypto market, give or take, it just requires that much more um, energy and that much more buying power behind it to um, push it to the multiples that we've seen on previous occasions. So, um, yeah, this is probably what I'm expecting. So, and we need to just um, alter our expectations and um, our positioning in our portfolio uh, accordingly. Um, and yeah, if we look further down the risk spectrum, we can obviously look at some of the alts uh, where you where, where you do you know, see returns like we've seen in previous market cycles, but then you obviously need to take into account that you're going to be taking on higher risk and that's you know, potentially your your favorite alt that you've um, put your life savings into um, may may ultimately fail. And that's the risk that you obviously need to um, juggle with as, as the investor or, or the trader on the other side and just be responsible in that process. So, but I think this is a good way to just, um, yeah, put put the, uh, yeah, put, have a have a yardstick and compare, um, you know, the, the, the current price action to what we've seen on market cycles. And again, I, I think maybe you guys are tired of hearing it, but uh, you know, one of my favorite sayings is that um, the market doesn't repeat, but it does run. So we are seeing some rhythm, we are seeing some elements of repeating, but yeah, you know, it, it's unrealistic uh, to expect that um, things are going to uh, repeat and play out exactly like they have in the past. Now, uh, Paul, you have been looking at the Dixie, of course, that's the dollar index against a couple of the key foreign exchange currencies. Um, and I think that's key as well, because Bitcoin over the last three years has become uh, 
almost a, a potential hedge. I mean, we look at the, the big boys, um, uh, Tesla even spoke about it, or Elon Musk, but obviously the big one is uh, Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy, really talking about how he's hedging against hyperinflation into Bitcoin. Um, how does the Dixie and, and the dollar strength impact this current market cycle? So Bitcoin is measured predominantly against the dollar. You know, you get, you get guys that arbitrage your euro, um, euro Bitcoin chart to the dollar Bitcoin chart, but I think ultimately the dollar has got the biggest influence on most currencies and assets. You know, everyone measures silver against the dollar, gold, Bitcoin, or your stocks are all measured against dollars. So you can look at dollar as the, the leader even before Bitcoin when you, you alter down to altcoins and you, you start making decisions on, on what you want to do and what's going to move next. So yeah, I'd like to start start with the dollar. Um, I'll bring up the chart. So share my screen. Up. Yeah, so if we look at the dollar on, on a weekly, um, you know, this, this period yeah, was when Bitcoin had its massive run. And I think it was from ten thousand dollars right up to the, the previous or the first all-time high of sixty sixty thousand odd. Yeah, so so weak dollar. I think it was just after COVID. Um, weak dollar, which meant Bitcoin had free reign. You know, if people are selling their dollars, it means that they're buying something else. You know, so they're buying assets, gold, silver, Bitcoin, high-risk assets. But you know, that's kind of turned around in the last. In the last few months and there's quite a big inverse head and shoulders here which i've drawn out um and th this has been the period of, of bitcoin sell-off you know you had your mm. bitcoin margin your higher high which then resulted in the first the first dump um and then again another 30 40 percent that's let go so the dollar is looking extremely bullish which is it's not giving bitcoin any any breathing room um and if, if I had to, you know, add another sort of view or, or outlook on, on what Graham has mentioned with an extended market, for sure. And the short term period, it still looks as if, you know, the dollar is going to be strong. Um, you know, I look at the monthly charts and it's still very, very bullish to me. You know, these are big green monthly candles. Uh, yeah, sure. It looks, it looks to be slowing down a little bit, but target of our head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, is, is up here at around 100. Now, so we're kind of only halfway there, um, which which to me is, is the sign of to be cautious, you know, don't mm. be in leverage positions, Graham, Graham's mentioned that already, but uh, use this as a time to accumulate, you know, your other assets, Bitcoin and the likes, while it is going down and moving sideways. So. Yes, it's it's a very important chart to look at. I think, um, especially if you're going into an asset against the strongest currency. I mean, overall macro, cool, sure, um, but maybe something to be wary of. It's just more of you know more of this before we move up. Yeah, agreed. And I think just to add on what Paul's saying about the dollar, the um, I think from a macroeconomic point of view, it's worth recognizing that. Bitcoin does you know, really well when there is um, loose monetary policy. So when the Fed is is creating more money, it's printing more money, it's, it's lowering interest rates, that um, is almost the ideal conditions for Bitcoin to perform. Why? Because Bitcoin's um, the hardest money out there uh, because it's limited in, limited in supply, whereas the dollar, along with all the other fiat currencies, is unlimited effectively in supply. Let's move into the alts a little bit now because obviously a lot of people are interested. They want to talk about those. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time and a lot of you you um, sent through your requests, requests like uh, Mana, Cornell and Edward. Shout out to you guys. Requests for Ada from Craig. Apologies, guys. We're not going to be able to get to those. So I know that I uh, threw it out there. Apologies, we didn't get to it. But uh, we're just going to do two um, altcoins. It's going to be XRP and ETH. Um, XRP, because, well, of course, uh, Paul, you work with XRP each and every day. Um, but what's happening um, in XRP? Andrea sent through her request. She wanted to see what's happening with XRP. 
So take us through what uh, what you see, and it's nice to see that you have FTX um, as your exchange. Shout out to our sponsors as well. So, so yeah, uh, XRP, very interesting charts. Um, the first sort of standouts, you know, if you compare it to other altcoins, even Bitcoin, is that it hasn't run its course. You know, it hasn't made new highs. It hasn't outperformed anything for, for a significant period. It, it was something that we were all waiting for um, quite some time ago, myself included. It almost looked as if we were ready to go at this point. I was shorting this, this triangle a little bit. Um, and, and that didn't come. You know, we were waited for long enough. And we didn't get it. Um, Bitcoin ran, Ethereum ran, Binance, name them all, but um, just not not Ripple. But that's not to say it won't. You know, Ripple's definitely got massive potential. I mean, you look at the past sort of run, how quickly that happens. Two to three days, it's phenomenal what it can do. So, um, yeah, it's, it's something that I watch every day and. and um, obviously, at the time, it's, it's still all about Bitcoin and making sure we follow the leader, if you, want to, if you want to call it that. But it's a nice setup, you know, a big time frame setup. Uh, it still looks nice. It's got good volume uh, throughout the middle of, of the charts. So, still lots of opportunity uh, to come for a full I would say, as mentioned with Bitcoin, good accumulation phase here. Really good. The more sideways movement to, to bottom out, but uh, I think still lots of upside to come uh, for Ripple in general. Yeah. All right. Again, looks like one of those charts where it's just time in the market. You don't want to be leveraged. You want to wait this one out and wait for the, the market cycle to really pick up. All right, Graham, let's come to you for the last chart of the day. Uh, ETH BTC, a lot of people oh. talking about, uh, about Ethereum at the moment. And, um, you know, it's interesting that you wanted to talk uh, in the BTC chart as opposed to ETH USD. Um, is that because there is some outperformance that we're looking at here where, where Ethereum could actually outperform Bitcoin in this uh, latter part of this current bull market cycle? Yes. So it is my expectation that uh, Ethereum outperforms here. Um, the credit due also to Francis Han, so he's someone that I also follow closely, and he's been talking about this potential outperformance. Um, you know, the structure for me is pretty clear. You know, once you zoom up to a big enough time frame, so on, this is on a three-day chart. You can see in the orange, you've already got an inverse head and shoulder structure that's played out for this current bull market cycle. Um, then currently, we've been in a, again you know, sideways price action on this chart for the last couple of months, but um, there's an even bigger um, inverse head and shoulders now highlighted by the blue lines here um, with a neckline pretty much where we at at current prices. So this is essentially showing you that this inverse head and shoulders is potentially just triggered, uh, which means that there's tremendous upside um, that um, can um, form out of this over the coming months. So this is on a log chart. Uh, that will probably give you some better perspective if we take the log um, effect off. Um, and just to highlight that, you know, here there's a potential for, let's call it a 90 plus percent outperformance of Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Um, and as you may know, currently Bitcoin is effectively double the market cap of Ethereum. So if you did have um, 100 percent, let's just round up, you know, 100 percent outperformance of Ethereum versus Bitcoin over the coming months, that's going to get you very close to that flipping um, price point where you're going to have a uh, very close um, uh, valuation of market cap between Bitcoin and Ethereum. And this chart will even show you a little bit clearer. This, so this is the, the Ethereum market cap divided by the Bitcoin market cap. So obviously a one would be the flipping point where they're equal. Um, so this shows you that we're currently at a half. That's effectively where that neckline is. So yeah, just to re reiterate, a doubling of the price of, of Ethereum relative to Bitcoin is going to give you, you know, get you close to that flipping event. So this is quite an early call. Um, you know, just because you can draw inverse head and shoulders doesn't mean it's going to make targets. But um, you know, this is um, you know, forms part of our core thesis for 2022 is the outperformance of Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And we are allocating accordingly within our portfolio. 
Um, and yeah, look, if it, even if it doesn't make that target, you know, if it makes it halfway there, you know, you, you're still going to get have some um, significant outperformance. So that's, um, I think, a, a big point of um, interest that um, is, is worth um, keeping an eye on. Some of those figures are astounding. Gentlemen, I think we're going to leave it there. Any final thoughts from yourselves before we say goodbye? Um, Paul, let's start with you. I would reiterate the fact that you know, leverage trading at the moment is, is still high risk. So uh, it's a good accumulation period for just hodlers. Definitely, you know, we, we even if we haven't bought them now um, and we go a bit lower, it's still a good opportunity to ladder and build a position. Um, I think Graham is, is illustrated. We're still in for a big bull market, um, not at the same velocity necessarily, but it's still a good asset class to be in. You know, it's it's good opportunity to to increase size. Uh, yeah, and just trade with trade with caution. Agree with that. Um, it still remains a pretty choppy market. Um, I'm not looking at any leverage positions personally. Agree with Paul. I think it's an opportunity to accumulate. Um, I think there's a potential for the current structure. Let's say on the four-hour chart um, that this may be a local bottom. Um, so potentially decent point for entries, even on some of your altcoins, but don't get too clever, don't get carried away. Um, but yeah, looking forward to 2022. I think, again, you know, digital assets, crypto is going to be your best asset class for building wealth. Um, but yeah, um, make, make sure that you're not blowing yourself up um, you know, during the downturns and make sure that we're there for, for, the, um, for the big gains to the upside when, when they come. Yeah, it's gonna be a really, it's gonna be a really great 2022 by the looks of things, eh? It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be fun and fireworks. Can't wait to get there. Uh, Graham, Paul, thank you so much for joining us today on Global Crypto's Market Analysis. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks, James. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us today on uh, episode 64 of the Global Crypto Market Analysis. Once again, proudly sponsored by FTX. If you don't have an account with them. What have you been waiting for? As you saw, some of those charts were direct from FTX. So uh, join up, sign up, and uh, hit the link in the description below. Thanks to our analysts. They're in Telegram. They're in our WhatsApp group. You can say hi to them there, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh,